Hey Studio Bounce, my name's Joe Hertz. I'm a producer from London and welcome to my studio. So the studio is in West London. Um, I moved in here with two guys called Frank Moody who I work closely with. And I guess we've been here for about three years. There's been a few all nighters, but yeah, we won't go into that. So I got into producing uh, from DJing. So I used to DJ a lot of drum and bass. Um, used to be obsessed with like neuro and liquid drum and bass, like obsessed with the production, you know, it was always, that was what I was interested in. People like Noisia, Spectrosoul, um, you know, going to Fabric on a Friday. Um, and that kind of led on to me wanting to, you know, make music myself. It kind of moved towards uh, wanting to make music that was more soulful, you know, more song structure, like um, working with songwriters and actual musicians, you know. <laughs> and the way it all started for me um, in the sort of public eye was on SoundCloud, definitely. Um, and through like YouTube channels, people like Majestic Casual and stuff like that, so supporting the sound, the sound you need. Um, they were all really important channels for me at the beginning, um, supporting what I was doing. Because there wasn't really a genre that I could label um, my music to. Uh, it was a kind of a, a blend of everything. You know, it was hip hop, it was electronic, it was funk, soul, a bit jazzy. Um, and yeah, it was it was all internet related. How you know I got here. <laughs> My first EP, Chapter One. Um, I worked uh, quite closely with Amber Simone um, and other people like Colleen Taylor um, to pull together this kind of uh, like electronic R&B house uh, blend, basically. So last year I released my third EP, Night Days, at the end of the year, which um, was a big project for me. You know, it took, it took a long time to bring all those tracks together. Um, but this year it's uh, not just my next project as an artist, it's trying to uh, produce other artists as well. So get a bit more involved with other people's projects and, you know, spread the sound out a little bit. <laughs> I've got to say the studio must-haves for me are caffeine, sugar, and then just little trinkets, just little vibey trinkets, you know, things that like, you know, that I like, that I've picked up around the world, around, you know, my time, you know, that I like to just see when I'm writing, you know, like look to the left, you've got something little there, you know. Um, I've got a lot of vinyl in here as well, so um, just around the top, just seeing like other things that I've, been into in the past um, it's it's good like when when people come in here for the first time and see all this stuff it also gives them new ideas you know that might like tie in with what I like a little bit more as well so it kind of it just helps people understand me a little bit more when they walk in and it's not just a bare room so the equipment I use um, I actually built my own computer so I am running Mac but it's built more like a gaming PC so it's you know it's just got the specs to run potentially like hundreds of tracks with plugins all over the place so yeah I don't like to be restricted um, also the virus ti2 is my go-to synth like I've got other synths as well I've got the profit uh, the Juno 106 and the Jupiter um, but I've got to say the virus ti2 is the Joe Hertz sound <laughs> I use Adam a7 speakers the old ones not the a7x's just got used to them, used them for years. I've got a little lunchbox. Uh, it's looking pretty sad at the moment. It's um, just got a pre in there for the mic. Uh, I've got U87, uh, which is a good mic. And then just little little things like this, like kalimba, some cymbals, I don't know, random, random things. <laughs> uh, so a software we're using, uh, Logic 9. Some people are like, why aren't you on Logic 10? I can't really answer that question fully. I just like Logic 9. Um, stuck in my ways, I guess. And yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the basic overall vibe. So the track I'm going to be breaking down is "Goodbye Kisses" featuring Pip Millet, uh, which is off my latest EP, "Night Days." Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I um, I started with this uh, background effects, uh, so like three. Um, 
like bird and like atmosphere noises, like nothing tonal, just like background noise, just to create a bit of texture. So, which is this. Literally just some, some background stuff. And then um, I went with the drum beat, which I mean, I'm pretty old school. I, I, I program my drums. So this is all running through it's all running through a bus which is uh, low passed at the beginning. Um, so all my drums are going through this filter. So what do we have here? We got like a kick snare, another little ghost snare, a couple ghost snares, um, a few little percussion. I think I, I, I like to use Echo Boy on my hi hats just to create a kind of even even if I've programmed the rhythm, I like to have these kind of uh, lower level versions of the hi hat sort of playing syncopated rhythms within it. Um, kind of creates a more busy or less programmed feel. Um, so yeah, all the drums together. So yeah, and I think I have all of them running into a bus, um, which is just got a compressor on it, sort of bringing it um, all together. So subtle with and without that compression. I don't like to compress my drums in a way that's over compressed. I just like it to control the dynamics a little bit, but not even so that you can hear it. It's just so that it's actually just stopping certain levels affecting other things basically. So I've got like an 808 sub uh, in the intro and then um, in the chorus it flips to like a programmed real bass. Which is just contact. Yeah, that's the contact uh, Rickenbacker bass, which I use a lot. I haven't even done anything to it. I mean, it comes with such good sound. It's just about finding it's about finding the right velocities to um, create a more like real sounding bass line. And uh, you know, it's, it, playing bass on keys, it's quite hard because you're not going to play like a, like a bass player would usually play. So you've got to kind of be very conscious of like what, how, how you're playing. So like a lot of octaves, a lot of fifths. Um, yeah, sort of creates that kind of real bass feel. So I've, got like, I've got the main Rhodes patch. Just a nice road sound. Um, it's I think it's Native Instruments as well. Yeah, I use a lot of Native Instruments stuff. I really would recommend Complete 10 or 11 or whatever it's on now. You get so much for your money. Little Native Instruments plug there. Sponsor me if you like. I use that key sound for the verse and then we flip to the chorus. So for the chorus I've got sort of similar chord progression, but the sound kind of expands out. It's like a, a thicker, fatter, synthier sound. And that, that is, uh, that's actually, I think that's Diva. Yeah, that's Diva, uh, this bad boy. It's just quite analog sounding, which is quite nice. And you can, you know. Yeah, I think I automated the cut off and just the reverb or something on that, just to give it a bit of movement. So if you play the drums at the same time. So that's like the main bulk of the re record. Everything else is kind of just like, built around that, you know, it's, it's just stuff that's going to complement that. So I think I just had that going on a loop and I was just jamming, jamming ideas, um, either on the Prophet or the Virus TI2, um, I came up with this weird blippy, echoey, weird thing that kind of works with the chords. It just acts like a counterpart, you know, I was just 
playing that idea, I was like, I don't want to just keep adding the same layer of uh, MIDI in different sounds. Like I did that, you know, before, and it, it just creates it creates a fat sound, but you're not you're not filling out the whole idea. So I think just jamming over that and trying to come up with new little counter rhythms, counterparts, um, counter melodies, just makes something more interesting. I think I just had it on loop for ages. I was just playing something, messing with reverb, and came up with that. And it just, that, that can sit at the, at the beginning of the chorus and it kind of gives it like this. I've got these chimes. They're just going on in the background, really quiet. And then uh, there's a few little incidental kind of. Another little, another little thing. So I've got like a harp and a synthy sort of thing going on there. Yeah, so that's during the verse, and it's just to kind of keep interest again. It just makes the chord progression sound a little bit more expensive. <laughs> but I, you know, I like to like sort of just keep, you know, keep digging until you, you just embellish something as much as possible. That's mainly the instrumental there. So I'll, I'll play that. So that all of that stuff happens. For the vocals, um, I worked with a girl called Pip Millet. Uh, I hadn't worked with her before. Um, I heard her stuff on SoundCloud and we organized a session. She came down and yeah, it was really cool. Like she, she's got like a very poetic way of writing. Um, and she did all the vocals. She did all the harmonies and came up with the concept uh, for the song. So I was just, um, I was just working the beat mainly when, when she was in the studio. Um, and it's always great because you know you get these singers that are usually um, very outspoken and stuff like that. But she's like, doesn't say anything. Like sort of sits in the back, very quiet. You're like, oh, am I making something good? And then she comes out with with the with the full full like two verses and a chorus. And I was like, wow, okay, it's happening. Let's do this. Darling, in my heart, don't fool me. It seems I'm in the red again. Um, EQ'd it quite medically <laughs> you kind of go in <laughs> and you find exactly the frequency that is a problem you know you want to push up the way I do it I, 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 try, I try and find resonant frequencies so I'll, I'll go through I'll sweep through the vocal with a really sort of tight EQ like that find something that sticks out in my ear like what's you know what's really resonant I can see like she's got like a lot of low-end sort of information going on um, so I I took it down there and I did the same thing for the mid range and, and, and up here as well. And it kind of gives it this like really warm vocal sound. You know, you kind of put out all the, all the problem frequencies that are going to bite you in the face. Darling, in my heart, don't fool me. Uh, gate, taking out any background noise. Um, and then I used the glue compressor, um, just simple compression, nothing too crazy. Darling, in my heart, don't fool me. Yeah, quick attack, sort of medium release. And then I chucked on an SSL EQ, I think just to, yeah, again, like just attenuate some of the mid-range stuff. Um, and yeah, that's how I just kept, kept, kept messing with the EQ settings, listening to my backtrack till it just felt like it sat right. Just keep coming back to it, keep adding things, keep embellishing it with little, little things that people are going to go, oh, yeah, that's cool, you know? Um, and yeah, I think if you just keep pushing any any piece of music like that, it just it's just gonna make it better, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Studio Bounce. I've been Joe Hertz. Uh, you can listen to my music on Spotify, Apple Music, or any of those streaming sites. You check out the new remix package that's out now for my last EP, Night Days, featuring four very sick remixes. Um, and you can check out my new remix for Kabu that's out now. Mm -hmm.